In this video, I'm going to review the Thor TF470 air filtration unit. I've had mine for a few months now and I've been generally happy with it, but I want to know more about how it's performing, so I'll be doing some testing later in this video to try and figure that out. The best thing about this machine, in my opinion, is the compact size. Most of the other units that are available to buy are designed to clean spaces much bigger than my workshop, which isn't necessarily a problem because it's better to have more air movement than not enough. But the biggest problem for me was the size of those units. I simply didn't have enough ceiling height and there was just no good place to put one in my shop. My workshop internally, by the way, is four meters long by 2.6 meters wide, and it's about 2.2 meters in height. And for me, the ceiling height was the main issue because having something that big hanging from my ceiling would have been a problem no matter where I put it. So I was really happy to find a unit designed for a smaller workshop, and it's great that someone is catering for that, especially because there's a lot of that here in the UK. Here's a quick size comparison for some of the most common units that are available to buy like the ones available from Rutlands, Record Power and Jet. And you'll see that all of those are a similar size, similar weight and are designed to clear the air in similar sized spaces. The Thor, however, is much smaller, much lighter in weight and it's designed to clear 40 cubic meters. My workshop works out to be about 26 cubic meters. So based on those figures, it's pretty much ideal for my needs. Now on to what I don't like about the Thor TF470 so far. Firstly, it's louder than I expected. It says on the Poolwood website that it's very quiet. I disagree, I wouldn't say it's very quiet. I wouldn't say it was loud either though, but if I've got my radio on at a reasonably low level, which I often do while I'm working in the shop, then I can't really hear it anymore while the filtration unit is switched on. I live in a very built up area and I would say that it's definitely not loud enough to be a nuisance to neighbours, but my point is it's definitely not very quiet. The second thing I dislike applies only to the Wi-Fi version of the unit, which is the one that I have. To turn the unit on or off, there are two options. The first is to use a smartphone app and on the iPhone, it's a bit cumbersome because I first need to unlock my phone, then open the app, then press the button to turn it on or off. And that doesn't sound like a big deal, but it does get annoying, especially because when I'm in the workshop, I often have dirty hands covered in glue, dust and whatever else. So I really don't want to be reaching for my phone regularly. What would make it much easier is if there was a widget for the app that could be on the lock screen, which would speed things up, but there isn't one on the iPhone. I'm not sure if the Android version is different. What makes it even worse is that sometimes I load up the app and it signed me out of my account and it wants me to sign in again. Very annoying. I've actually given up using the app now, so I just use the second method of turning the unit on and off, which is via a switch on the top of the machine. But that's also not very well designed in my opinion, as because the unit is mounted to the ceiling and the button is tiny, it's very difficult to find it by feel. I was standing there fumbling for it for ages on more than one occasion. So what I've done as a workaround is put a blob of hot glue just beneath where the switch is so that it's easier to feel with my hand. So if you're interested in buying one of these machines, I'd recommend buying the one that comes with the remote control instead. And I wish that I'd have ordered that one too. Something else that's interesting to mention is the method for testing the filter performance that is detailed in the instructions that you get with the machine, which is to put a piece of A4 paper on the bottom of the unit while it's switched on, turn the unit off and time how long it holds the paper for. And in the instructions, it recommends changing the filters once the time it holds the piece of paper for reduces by 50% from when the filters were clean. Like I said at the start, I've been using my unit for a few months now, so let's see how it does. When I first got the unit, I tried this out and it held the piece of paper for 20 seconds. So let's see how it does now. So that held for 16 seconds, which isn't as good as the filters when they were new, but I kind of expected that. 
I really like that method of testing the performance of the filters. I think it's an easy, tangible way to check. And while I'm on the subject of the filters, spare filters are available to buy and are priced at £12, which I don't think is too bad. But what I tend to do is just use my dust collection system to hoover off the filters from the outside of the unit. And once the filter starts to perform really badly, I'll probably take it outside with my respirator on and just blow away the dust with my air blower and reinstall them and see how it performs. But I can be a bit of a cheapskate, so maybe it's just better to buy a new set of filters. According to the statistics, these filters filter out 95% of dust at two microns or larger, 80% of dust down to one micron, and 65% of dust down to 0.4 micron. And it has an airflow rate of 400 cubic meters per hour. That stuff's all a bit too technical for me, but hopefully those numbers are useful to someone. The recommendation is to put this unit in the center of your workshop, but I couldn't really do that because it would have been in the way. So I put mine along one of the long walls of my workshop. Not ideal, but hopefully that doesn't affect the performance too much. One final thing before I do some testing, and that's to talk about where you can buy this machine. The TF470 is available to buy from only one place as far as I can see, and it's a company called Poolwood. I just need to interrupt this video to say that after doing a bit more research, I found that these machines are available in a couple of other places to buy as well. One is a website called Toolpost, and another is a website called Yandles. And I'll provide full information about pricing and availability of these machines in the description box. So if you're looking to buy one of these, it's worth doing a bit of shopping around to find the best price. Thor Filtration also makes some other models in various shapes and sizes that are available from the same website. And I think you'll find that no matter how small or large your workshop is, they probably have a product that caters for it well. You can also buy these machines via the Charnwood website. They are the same machines, but they've been rebranded with the Charnwood branding. But the TF470, which is the machine that I have on the Charnwood website, is called the MC420. To test out how effective the air filtration unit is, I've come up with a simple experiment and it's not going to be scientific or anything, so please just take it for what it is. First, I'm going to put on my respirator and then I'm going to create some dust and for that I'm going to use the disc sander on my benchtop sander. Normally I use a dust collection system hooked up to this machine, but as I'm trying to create airborne dust for this experiment, I'm not going to turn that on. And I'm going to be sanding this piece of beach as vigorously as possible for one minute. I chose beach because it's a hardwood and I've read that hardwoods create smaller micron particles of dust, which are the most harmful to your lungs. To the left of the benchtop sander, you'll see that I have set up a camera pointing at a stopwatch app on my phone, which is on the left, and my air quality monitor, which is on the right. And I'll be using the readings from the top line of the display, which is for particles greater than 0.3 microns. And you'll see here that the number of particles in the air prior to starting the experiment ranges from between 500 and 600. And that's pretty typical of what I normally get in the workshop during spells of inactivity, i.e. when I'm not using my tools or moving around too much. And by the way, I was speaking to Peter Millard from 10 Minute Workshop Channel about these devices recently, and he suggested plugging it in in the home, saying that I might be surprised at the readings. So I did, and I was surprised to find that the readings in my home were actually about 25% higher than in my workshop, which was quite shocking. To the left of the camera setup is the air filtration unit itself, ceiling mounted. And for the first experiment, I'm going to leave the air filtration switched off. So I started the stopwatch and sanded the piece of beach as vigorously as I could against the disc sander for one minute. After one minute, the reading was around 48,000, but you'll see that it actually continued to increase for the next three minutes, peaking at 65,000, and then it gradually started to drop over the course of the next 30 minutes, when the reading was around 4,700. Apologies for the reflections on the screen here, which makes the readings a bit difficult to read. 
It took about another 30 minutes after that for the level to go back down to the roughly 600 reading that we had prior to starting the experiment. So that means that the airborne dust took about an hour to settle back down to a normal level, which I found quite interesting. I didn't expect it to take that long. I kind of expected it to take around half an hour at the very most. Now that the dust in the air was back to a normal level, I turned on my air filtration unit and repeated the experiment again, sanding vigorously for one minute, And once again, the level continued to rise after the one minute duration, peaking at 35,000 after one and a half minutes, much lower than the 65,000 number, which was the peak without the air filtration unit. And also the peak dropped much more rapidly with the air filtration unit turned on, and it continued to reduce over the course of the next 30 minutes again. Here's a graph showing both experiments and the results speak for themselves really. I'm actually really surprised at how much of a difference the air filtration unit makes. This simple experiment really convinced me that these things are absolutely effective at significantly reducing airborne dust particles and are totally worthwhile. I also repeated these two experiments and while the readings were obviously different the next time, it was quite clear to me that the results and the trends were pretty consistent, showing that the air filtration unit works really well and in conclusion, throughout both experiments, the airborne dust particles were generally between 50 and 70% lower with the air filtration unit switched on than they were with the unit switched off. So to summarize, would I recommend getting an air filtration unit? If you can find space for one in your workshop and you can justify the expense, and if you're concerned about breathing in airborne dust, then yes, definitely. They really do make a big difference, but use it in addition to some sort of dust collection or shop vac hooked up to the tool that you're using, because collecting dust at source is always going to be the best way of reducing airborne dust. Would I recommend the machines by Thor? Yes, I would, although I don't have any experience with the other alternative units that are available to buy, so I can't say whether they work any better or any worse. But if you, like me, have limited space, then the machines available from Thor are a great solution. All I would say is that I'd suggest going for the model with the remote control as opposed to the Wi-Fi version if you're going to be using yours in a similar way to how I use mine. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already for more weekly woodworking videos. And thanks for watching.